4.2 practice problems. At, 20, at 27 degrees Celsius, five identical rigid two liter vessels are filled with nitrogen gas and sealed. Four of the five vessels also contain a 0 0.5 mole sample of sodium bicarbonate, uh, sodium bromide, copper, or iodine, as shown in the diagram above. The volume taken up by the solids is ne negligible, and the initial pressure of the nitrogen gas in each vessel is 720 millimeters of mercury. All four vessels are heated to 127 degrees Celsius and allowed to reach a constant pressure. At 127 Celsius, the pressure in vessel one is found to be higher than that of the uh, pressure in vessel two. Which of the following reactions best accounts for the observation? So uh, the substance in vessel one was sodium bicarbonate, um, or also known as baking soda, okay? and we are producing a higher pressure, which means that we are going to be producing a gas. So option A and B are going to be discarded because I don't produce uh, gases as any of my products, which uh, is not going to explain the sudden increase in pressure. So I am looking between these two and I'm gonna see which one is the most reasonable. So here I have sodium bicarbonate uh, decomposing into sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water or I have the sodium bicarbonate reacting with nitrogen to form sodium nitrate and uh, a uh, C2H2 compound. So I am looking for something that uh, produces a lot of gas and um, doesn't necessarily break up a lot of uh, polyatomics and then forming new polyatomics is not going to be a super common uh, occurrence. So option C, where I have the breakdown of sodium bicarbonate turning into sodium carbonate, which is still remaining as a solid, and I am producing both gaseous carbon dioxide and water is going to be my best uh, approximation of what is happening within the container. I am producing the most amount of gas and I am uh, not discarding a polyatomic and creating a brand new polyatomic. So that is going to be my answer. Which of the following uh, is the net ionic equation for the reaction of aqueous sodium fluoride and hydrochloric acid? So the net ionic equation should eliminate anything that is aqueous on both sides. Um, and so I am going to, uh, or remains in the same state on both sides. So here, um, the net ionic should have every molecule broken up into its ions if it is able to dissociate. Um, this does not have any ions, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate it. Here I have um, everything remaining aqueous um, and they are staying on both sides. So you can see that the sodium is the exact same on both sides, so that is not a net ionic equation. Here I have uh, the sodium chloride uh, ions turning into sodium chloride, and we have it together as aqueous. We know that sodium chloride is uh, very soluble and is going to break up into its constituent ions, so that's not going to be what is going to happen. However, the hydrofluoric acid, we have kind of the same thing going on here, where we have the two um, initial ions, and then we have our combined thing. Now the state still says aqueous, just like it did with the sodium chloride. This is when you are going to have to know that the hydrofluoric acid is actually a weak acid, which means that it dissociates um, pretty poorly. And so it is going to stay together in the HF formula and as that compound rather than dissociate into its constituent ions, unlike sodium chloride, which is extremely soluble. So D is going to be my best option. Equal volumes of a 0.2 molar solution of lead 2 nitrate and potassium bromide are combined to form lead 2 bromide as a yellow precipitate. Which of the following is the correct net ionic equation for this reaction? So I should have lead 2 bromide as the thing that is on my uh, products side. So I can eliminate anything that doesn't have lead 2 bromide on my product side. I am asking for a net ionic equation, which means I should not see any extra ions on that appear on both sides. So you can see here that potassium remains in the exact same state on both sides, so that's gonna be eliminated. Here, I don't have uh, 
ions at all. And so A is going to be my best and only choice uh, that has ions on one side and then my precipitate appearing on the other. The reaction between aqueous strontium chloride, SrCl2, and aqueous potassium sulfate, K2SO4, forms a precipitate of strontium sulfate. Which of the following represents the net ionic for that equation? So I should see strontium sulfate on my product side. I'm going to eliminate anything where I don't see that. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to eliminate anything that doesn't make any sense. So we have um, the same ions appearing on both sides in option choice C. Uh, option choice D, we don't have any ions appearing. And so B is my only option here that makes any sense. Um, I have my initial aqueous uh, ions forming my precipitate. When the equation above is balanced and all coefficients are reduced to their lowest whole numbers, the efficient for oxygen the coefficient for oxygen is. So we need to go ahead and uh, balance this equation. So I would have my um, list of all of my um, elements that are present, and I'm going to count for both sides. So carbon on the left is 10, carbon on the right is 1, hydrogen on the left is 12, on the right is 2, oxygen on the left is 6, then on the right is 5. Then sulfur on the left is 1. Sulfur on the right is 1 as well. So uh, with Minho, it says metals first. I don't have any metals. Then ions. I don't have any ions. Then uh, nonmetals other than uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So that's going to be sulfur and carbon. Carbon is currently not balanced. So I'm going to go ahead and deal with carbon. Uh, I have one I want 10, so I'll multiply that by 10, and I'll adjust my counts. So now on the right-hand side, I have 20 plus 2, so 22 plus 1, that gives me 23 oxygens. And then um, sulfur is still balanced, so I'm going to leave that alone as much as possible. Uh, then it's H before O, so I'm going to deal with uh, the hydrogen here. I have two, I want 12, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by 6. That gets me 12. I'll readjust my count. I have uh, 22 plus 6, so 28 um, oxygens present on the right-hand side and 6 on the left. I have 4 coming from this carbon complex, which I'm going to try to leave alone because I did so much work trying to balance the carbon and hydrogen before, so I want to leave it alone. So that means that I need to get a total of 24 oxygens coming from this O2. So uh, 12 times 2 will get me to 24, plus that 4 will get me to 28. So that means that everything will be balanced. So I'm asked for the coefficient in front of oxygen. That was 12. So my option choice is going to be option choice C for my uh, correct coefficient for oxygen when it's balanced. The equation above is balanced and all coefficients are reduced to the lowest whole uh, number terms. The coefficient for the uh, phosphoric acid is. Uh, so I need to go ahead and um, write out all of the, uh, the participants here. So I have calcium phosphate uh, remains intact. So I can count that as one thing. And then I have hydrogen. So calcium on the left-hand side, I have three. Calcium on the right, I have one. Phosphate on the left, I have three. Phosphate on the right, I have two. And um, for the hydrogen on the left, I have three. On the right, I have four. So first up with Minho, I'm going to deal with my metals first. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, put a coefficient of three in front of that calcium, and then I'm going to adjust my counts. So now I have uh, a grand total of six hydrogens on the right hand side and now I have uh, six phosphates as well. Um, and then on the left hand side um, I'm going to deal with my ions before my uh, hydrogen. So I have three on the left and I want six but I am going to try to leave this uh, substance alone so that means I'm going to try to get up to six minus the two that I have from here. So I need four uh, grand total uh, coming from 
this uh, complex. So I will have four uh, phosphates from here, two from here, giving me six. And then uh, four times three gives me a grand total of uh, 12 hydrogens. It uh, gives me a total of 12 hydrogens on the left. Um, I just realized I made a little bit of a minor mistake here for my count for hydrogen on the right-hand side. There's a two on the outside and a two on the inside, and I forgot to go ahead and distribute that. So three times two, that gives me six, but I have two of those, so that gives me 12 as well. So that is going to get me to uh, balanced on all of my elements. And so I am just asked for the coefficient in front of the uh, phosphoric acid complex, and that is going to be four, which is option choice D. Uh, when the equation for the reaction represented above is balanced for all coefficients and reduced to their lowest whole number terms, the coefficient for oxygen is. So I need to go ahead and um, write out all of the uh, participants here. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and count them out. So carbon on the left-hand side, I have three. On the right-hand side, I have one. Hydrogen on the left-hand side, I have eight. On the right, I have two. Oxygen on the left, I have two. And on the right, I have three. Uh, Minho says metals first. I don't have any metals. Then ions. I don't have any ions. Then non-metals other than hydrogen and oxygen. So that would leave me with carbon. So I have one. I want three. I'll go ahead and multiply that by three and adjust my counts. So that gets me to six, seven oxygens here. And then H before O, I need uh, to adjust here. So I currently have two, but I want eight. So I'm going to have to multiply by four here and um, adjust my count from there. So I have four oxygens here plus six, so that gets me to 10. And then I have two, but I want 10, so I'm gonna go, have, go ahead and have to multiply that by five, um, which gets me to uh, 10 oxygens on the left-hand side as well, which makes everybody balanced. So that would mean that my coefficient for my balanced formula for oxygen is going to be five. When the equation above is balanced and the coefficients are reduced to their lowest whole, term, whole number terms, what is the coefficient for water? Um, so I need to go ahead and write out everybody that is present. So I have lithium, I have hydrogen. Uh, car uh, carbonate does not make it through intact, so I do need to separate carbon and oxygen. Uh, sulfate, on the other hand, does make it through intact, so I can count that as a single thing. So on the left-hand side, I have one lithium. On the right-hand side, I have two. Hydrogen, on the left-hand side, I have three. On the right-hand side, I have two. Carbon, on the left-hand side, I have one. On the right-hand side, I have one. Oxygen outside of sulfate, on the left-hand side, I have three. Oxygen on the right-hand side, outside of sulfate, I also have three. Sulfates, on the left, I have one. Sulfates on the right, I also have one. So Minho says metals first, so that would be the lithium complex, and I have one I want two, so I'll go ahead and multiply that by two and adjust my counts. So I have two lithiums, now I have two from here, two from here, so that means four hydrogens, and then uh, two carbons, and six oxygens outside of sulfate. Um, Minho then says uh, ions, my current only ion is sulfate, which is still balanced, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Then non-metals other than hydrogen and oxygen, so that would leave me with carbon. I have one, but I want two, so I'll go ahead and multiply that by two and adjust my counts. So now I have a grand total of uh, four, five oxygens on the right-hand side, and now I'm on to hydrogen. Hydrogen, I have two, but I want four, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that by two. That gets me up to four hydrogens, and two plus four is six oxygens, which balances everything out. Uh, I'm looking for the coefficient in front of water, and that was two, so that is going to be my final choice.